artificial intelligence seems to progress very slowly at the moment, but I think this is only the calm before the storm. Many researchers in the field expect an intelligence explosion once these systems learn to improve themselves. And it's not just talk. We're getting closer to this each day. Let's have a look. I don't know about you, but the more AI-generated text I've endured, the more I've come to value human writing, especially journalism. If you're also tired of AI mush and looking for high-quality journalism, I recommend you check out The Economist. And yes, I have a special discount for you. The Economist is a comprehensive news magazine that covers global affairs with sharp, intelligent analysis. They don't just cover economics, but also politics, society at large, tech and science. What I especially value about The Economist is that they cover genuinely original material and I find their reporting generally balanced and to the point. They recently ran a very interesting article about AI developments in China, for example, which explains that the Chinese think of the use of AI very differently than the Americans, much more pragmatic, and that this might end up being a big advantage. Personally, I like reading the print version because I spend too much time looking at screens anyway, but besides the online version, The Economist also has an app with videos, podcasts and an audio version so you can listen to the news while you're on the go. I'm actually looking forward to receiving the weekly issue for my information fix. If that sounds like something you have used for too, here comes the special offer. You'll get 20% off their subscription if you use my link economist.com slash Sabine and now back to the science news. The moment that artificial intelligence learns to improve itself and then rapidly outsmarts us all was originally called the singularity. But that term seems to have fallen out of favor, maybe because singularities are now linked to what waits inside of black holes that, alas, also shreds you into pieces and then ends time. So maybe not a great selling point. They now call it the intelligence explosion. And it's supposed to be driven by what's technically called recursive self-improvement. Here's Google CEO Eric Schmidt explaining this. In the industry, it is believed that somewhere around five years, no one knows exactly, the systems will begin to be able to write their own code. That is, they literally will take their code and make it better. And of course, that's recursive. I thought that is essentially a change in slope. If you're going like this, all of a sudden it goes like that. The scary thing is now that research in recursive self-improvement has come a long way just in the past months. In May, DeepMind announced Alpha Evolve, that's an AI which improves code by routes similar to natural evolution. That is, it does random changes like mutations and the most successful ones survive. It's just that it evolves code for the highest accuracy and efficiency rather than lags for folding into economy class seats. Alpha Evolve actually invented a better way to multiply matrices that no one had thought of before. This is remarkable because remember that matrix multiplication is one of the operations that the current large language models do all the time. DeepMind reports that this improvement led to a 1% reduction in Gemini's training time. I find this super impressive and seeing the application of data centers, it's a sort of self-improvement, but this program didn't, strictly speaking, improve itself in the sense that it didn't edit its own code. But this isn't the only thing that's happened recently. In March, two researchers from the AI think tank Tufa Labs put forward a mechanism by which a large language model can self-improve. They let the model simplify questions and then give it an opportunity to check whether the answers are correct and then build up from there to increasing complexity. The example they have is that the model learns to solve increasingly complicated integrals. The researchers find that this way the model model becomes dramatically better at succeeding. That is some self-improvement, but still not the self-rewriting that we're looking for. 
In another paper that just appeared a few weeks ago, researchers took a first step towards this. They let a large language model edit its own hyperparameters. The hyperparameters are normally some sort of black magic numbers that are tuned outside of the training for best performance. But these researchers let the model create fake training questions to which it knows the answers, train on the questions it's invented itself, and then let it tune its hyperparameters for best results. And that was remarkably successful in increasing the performance of a LAMA-based model on some standard benchmarks. But the researchers also observe signs of what's been called catastrophic forgetting. That is, the more you let a model edit itself, the less it remembers of its earlier training. As they write, performance on earlier tasks gradually declines as the number of edits increases. The effect of catastrophic forgetting can also be observed in government and occasionally in our fridge. Okay, so that is a step closer to models that actually rewrite themselves. But the maybe closest we've seen today to this is the Darwin Gödel machine, which was outlined in a preprint just a few weeks ago. This is an AI that can edit its own Python code. The mutations are then evaluated on standard benchmarks and the best ones are kept. With this, they see a significant improvement on various benchmarks. The remarkable thing about this approach is that, in principle, this AI could throw out the language model parts and build any kind of new program. However, in practice, each mutant must run and score on a benchmark within minutes on whatever compiler they can afford. This means that at the moment, the changes are necessarily small. But what will happen if you remove these constraints and put the thing on a supercomputer? Maybe we'll soon find out. For the time being, these are small research projects but it's likely that in the near future, these ideas will be implemented into the already existing systems. Exciting times ahead. But could we please make sure that the intelligence explosion doesn't fall on a Sunday? That'd really ruin my week. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.